Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about um, what do you need to care about when you're making goals for the end. Um, so uh, just a quick intro to me. Um, why do you care uh, what I'm talking about? Um, here's a lovely photo from when I was in a boy band. Um, so I look up to Brooke Bullock and Structure Multiplay. Um, I've been around for about 10 years doing multiplayer games pretty much exclusively. Um, I've shipped about 100 games. I think that number's probably close to 150 now. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, so things we're going to talk about today, so um, the considerations you need to do when you're um, kind of thinking about making a multiplayer game, um, how can you fail, um, and how do you avoid that, um, and also how do you set yourself up for success, um, but once you've got success, then what do you do? Um, so this is the kind of stuff that you want to have a look at. Um, so who are we? Who are multiplayer? What have we done? Um, what are the things you care about? Um, so we've been working on multiplayer games for about 15 years, the company shipped about 200. Um, we've worked with small indies, you know, guys making a game on their own, shipping 10, 15 users a day, that kind of work, all the way up to very big AAAs. Um, and we won the Development Award last year for Best Technology. Um, so here's some games we've worked on, some of you will have heard of Title 2, Rocket League, Game Floor, you know, these are premium AAA products, um, for supply, depending on the technology you like. Um, that's the kind of stuff that we've worked on, and just background on what I'm talking about here. So, Going to start making the game, uh, what do you need to think about? Um, so, how much is your audience? This is a good question. Um, are you making a game for 10 people? Are you making a game for 100 people? Are you making a game for 6.2 billion people? Um, how, you know, how many people are you making for? It will impact a lot of the decisions that we talked about early on in your, um, your life cycle. Um, what are you using for middleware? Um, I mean, this is kind of an important piece for any live game, particularly games on service. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Um, how do you know if the game works? Is it any fun? Um, how do you test it? Um, does something work at 10 years? Does it doesn't work at 1,000? That doesn't work in a million? Um, and how do you find out? Um, next up, unfortunately, the internet's a pretty horrible place. Um, it's full of people that are going to cheat in your game. Um, how do you deal with that problem? Um, and also, guess what? People are going to try to steal your game. Um, how do you actually make sure that you get paid for all the profile? So, how are some of the ways that games fail? Um, what can you do about it? Um, here are some scenes you might recognize. Um, have you seen this before? I always like using this as an example. So, um, this is a scale problem. Um, unfortunately, as you can imagine, the wild launch um, pretty busy. Um, have you seen this? The yeah, infamous Era 37 in uh, Diablo 3, um, Rockstar Online, GTA 5. All of these problems had scale issues. Um, these are all ultimately a scale problem. So, a lot of those are game server, actually game server scale problems, but I've seen middleware failures, I've seen the website go down. Um, there's a really good example of um, somebody who had all of their services also hooked into a web call on their site, they got DDoS, their game failed, and they literally went bankrupt. Um, don't do that, that's bad. Um, also, you can kind of restore any customer support. You know, these things, um, you've got to think about how these scale long term. Um, Here's some other kind of things that you've seen. Server busy, SimCity. Who here would say that SimCity was a successful launch? Yeah, of course, much. Um, same problem, kind of seeing back and forth. Um, they had some pretty horrific server issues at launch. I know at least one face of the audience knows this. Um, so, scale is one thing, but complexity. So, one of the big problems you can find with some of these titles. Um, their stuff's too complex. Um, they don't need it to be this complex. It doesn't work at scale. Um, having 11 interconnected moving parts sounds like a great idea when you're prototyping. Um, when it comes to ship something, uh, maybe that's not quite so realistic. So be simple in matchmaking. Um, you don't need to design this stuff from scratch. There are products out there that are great, that are battle tested, they're really hardened. Um, there are huge amounts of them out there in the space, and they're all great. You need to go talk to somebody about it. Um, Send me a bit of our architecture. Um, you know, speak to the guys from like um, GameSpars, Playcard, those sorts of people. They've done it all before, they know what they're doing, um, they can really help you with this stuff. Um, I want to touch a little bit on user journeys. So make sure that people, when they actually get into your game, um, they're not going to get stuck in a bottleneck. So if you, um, say for example, on load, you are talking to PSN, uh, for example, and you've decided to proxy that all through one setup. Um, and then suddenly that doesn't scale on launch day, um, you're going to be in for a bad time. Um, so just consider that every step of the journey, where is the user going to do it, where can the pitfalls be, uh, when you get paged at 4 a.m. on a Sunday, because hopefully you've got some monitoring, uh, can you fix it? Um, and on that, that respect, try to make this stuff fault tolerant. Um, 
if you are trying to set up for your long term success, make sure that if something fails, you know you can fail over, you can have something, you can have a hard drive die, and it's not going to get you much damage. Um, here's the bench that the show I mentioned earlier, um, for anybody who knows Cubeworld, um, it was a Minecraft clone from 2013, uh, but very really popular. Um, and unfortunately, they got DDoS so hard that their stuff fell off the internet. Um, now, because they were selling their own game, um, nobody can buy it, nobody can get into login servers, they can get into all play a multiplayer only experience, which unsurprisingly, unfortunately, meant that you can have one game that go bankrupt. Um, so, and this was ultimately that they, found, they wound up one hacker group on the internet and couldn't deal with it. Um, and they never solved the problem. Um, so, bad actors are going to try and mess with your stuff, right? Um, unfortunately, it's a life on the internet problem. Um, first up, cheaters. Um, so, cheating is a huge problem in multiplayer games, particularly, unfortunately, on PC, for any of you looking at shit in PC titles. Um, you may think, oh, I'm only going to get a few hundred users, I don't need to care. Uh, you need to care. Um, particularly early on in early access and those sort of titles, um, you live or die by your multiple players, and if they're the ones being persuaded by a cheater or otherwise bad experience, um, you're going to have a real big problem. So make sure you go speak to some guys that experience in the space. Um, you know, easy anti cheat, fair fight, these guys, they literally do anti cheat for a living. Please go speak to them. Um, Denial of service attacks, so this is an unfortunate side of the effect of the internet. Um, for those of you who don't know, gaming is one of the highest targeted, uh, other than porn, uh, it's one of the highest targeted uh, spaces for denial of service attacks. Um, multiplayer one Christmas managed to top five global DDoS attack um, against EA, which was fun. Um, so this will happen, you need to be aware of it. Um, you're probably only going to get script kiddies, like in all honesty, um, unless you become huge, but um, even these small attacks, like they lose in a game, they get upset, they hit, they try, you know, they run a booter or something, um, or like you can try and get something off the internet. Um, make sure you know what's going to happen. Um, if this happens, look at your areas. Um, if you've got stuff in the cloud, it's quite often a bit more protective um, than trying to run it in your own hardware. Um, and also, actual specific hacking attacks. So um, there's been plenty of cases out there that don't get talked about very often, but um, somebody, for example, uh, goes and hacks your store page and changes where all your money's going. Um, that's pretty bad. Um, there's pieces where, um, obviously, your GDPR coming up for uh, those of you in the room in Europe, um, but also there's your deal with European data. This is another space where you have to be very careful about what personal data. Um, is it secure or are you dealing with it properly and all that kind of stuff? Um, <coughs> people are going to try and hack it, particularly using customer databases, um, and they're going to try and dunk out that on the internet. Um, protect yourself against it. Um, have somebody have a look at your infrastructure, know what you're doing. Um, now, unfortunately, that's not the only thing that can go wrong during ship. Um, you can actually have poor gameplay problems. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, um, Halo Master Chief Collection came out and was going to be broken for about 100 days. Um, and Splash Damage came along and fixed it. Um, but actually, their issue was that the internet is a difficult place to be. Um, there is latency, unfortunately. You may not realize this, but if you all sat in your studio, um, you've got a server on your LAN, um, you're playing a game, it's fine, it works really well. Suddenly you try and test it on the internet and you realize that at 50 milliseconds it just doesn't work. Um, this is the kind of thing that you've got to be aware of. So test your game with latency early. Um, even if this means going out to um, AWS and buying a server in Japan, um, test what your game plays like at 250 milliseconds. It's important. Um, also, consumers are going to have really dodgy connections. Um, some of your most um, highest spending customers, particularly free to play games, will be somebody on this, um, some, his neighbor's Wi-Fi that he stole that one time in Dubai on 180 milliseconds with 13% packet loss, um, but he wants to spend thousands of dollars on your free to play game. Um, make sure that you can deal with the fact that, unfortunately, we don't all sit on lovely, um, nice um, connections, even in the UK. Um, there's plenty of people in rural areas that simply just don't have a good internet connection. So make sure you can deal with that, make sure your game can adapt with that, um, and make sure that even if there is a player having a bad experience, that his bad experience isn't bringing really everybody else. So you'll quite often see in games where you get one person lagging or rubber banding, somebody can't shoot him, it's not fun. Um, and if you're doing a game that's peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, be aware that there are thousands upon thousands of different setups out there in the world. Um, there's this Chinese router that you won't have heard of from 2003 that 100 people have got in their internet in their homes and it just ignores all standards. Um, so this is the kind of stuff you're going to have to deal with with NAT, uh, network address translation. So make sure you're, um, if you're doing this, you may need to look into kind of a NAT patch resolution or a relay or some kind of, some kind of proxy to help you with that problem. Um, so how do you, how do you, you know, deal with all these problems? Set yourself up success. Um, 
Develop your game in the real world. This is my number one piece of advice for anybody in the room. Um, don't sit in your office and just play on LAN. Um, your games will behave very differently in the real world. Um, that latency is important, make sure you're testing it. Um, make sure that you're actually testing in your real environment. If you've got a matchmaker, if you've got a live stats system, if you've got a dynamic store, if you've got um, any different analytics systems, when you are running your testing, close out for all the earlier even, make sure that you're actually doing it for all of those systems. If you leave it to the last minute, throw in a matchmaker change, it completely break the flow, you've never tested it, and it just doesn't work. Um, and ultimately, Get people that you trust, that you believe their feedback, that you really want to get engaged from all over the world to play your game together. Um, <coughs> that's the only, unfortunately, there are plenty of services out there that might say that you couldn't pretend that life exists. None of them really work that well as compared to actually getting people across the globe to play your game. Um, make sure that you're actually ready to deal with custom support. Um, so there are plenty of gamers out there that are going to have problems. Make sure you can actually speak to them. Um, so get actual dedicated support channels up in the space, um, following on from the community talk, your community will be the best place to do this. Um, website, forums, discourse, social media, these are the places that your game is going to be talking about your games, and more importantly talking about the problems they have with your game. So not only from a design and a, a, a development perspective, but also from the actual operations of your game. Um, we used during the launch title 2, we saw, uh, we have a tool that scrapes Twitter alerts, um, we saw users, um, Users on Time Warner Cable in California couldn't talk to Google data centers. Um, so we migrated to all the workflow and actually isolated around the problem by shifting the workflow. Um, war rooms, um, some of you will be familiar with this context, but get the people running your game with relying on certain pieces into, a, into one space that they can all talk to each other. So this doesn't have to be a physical room in an office, it might be for a AAA launch, but this could be a Skype bridge, this could be a conferencing system, this could be a Slack channel, this could be a Discord room, whatever it is. Make sure you know if you're using, say, four or five services, make sure you get them all in one place, they can all talk to each other, all diagnose problems. Um, this is, problems will happen on launch day, unfortunately. Um, just make sure that people can actually talk to each other and get stuff done. Um, don't forget the food. Um, <coughs> there is a great story about Dice prepping for a, uh, a month of launch room. Um, brought in loads of beer, loads of champagne, all ready for celebration, forgot to order food. Um, also, what happens after hours? Now, unfortunately, we're all human. We do need to sleep at some point. Uh, you might be super excited about your game. You might be watching it like a hawk, but if you really try and stay up for two hours straight, you're not going to have a good time. So, once you go to sleep, what happens? Make sure you know. If, if you've got people looking at the game, make sure they know how to contact you. Make sure they know when to contact you, what is important. Um, or make sure that if it's just you, you've got something like page GTL on, monitoring, looking after your game is going to wake you up. Um, so what does a good launch day look like um, for you guys? Um, so ultimately it's people playing your game. Um, really, if you've done your launch well, um, nobody should ever notice your live ops teams. Um, they should be the unsung heroes. Um, if you've got, as John Gibson would tell you, 64,000 people playing this game, um, that's a pretty good time. Um, what does a bad launch day look like? What was like this one? Um, I've seen launches like this. I've been involved in launches like this. Uh, this is not what you want to happen. Um, so, some of the bad launches that we've seen, um, they've just been either br normally brushed is the biggest problem, but just untested is the other one. Uh, we see stuff coming in super late, um, and the surprise surprise doesn't work. Um, so, you launched the game, it works, you sold it to companies, um, people love it, now what? Um, so, um, you need to make sure that your game is for life for Christmas. Um, so, you ship the game, then what? You probably have bought this for five years, what are you going to do with it? Cheers, DLCs, marketing stuff, all of that kind of thing. Um, if your game doesn't do too well at launch, or particularly if you're shipping into early access, um, then what? Um, so, marketing events, straight to Team for weekends, make sure you prep for those kind of things. Um, Tripwire, as an example, um, they grew to 2,000% CCU by launching on PS Plus. Um, that's another kind of keeping of advice if you get the offer to do this. One, make sure you can support it, but if you can, two, uh, go for it. So, what do you actually need to take away? Um, your studio is not representative of the internet, um, as much as you might think. Um, so make sure that you actually you know, test this stuff in the real world. Um, plan for your success, but mitigate your risks of failure. So talking a bit about scale earlier, um, that doesn't just mean scale up. Make sure you can scale down. Um, you don't want to bankrupt your company by trying to commit to a huge spend just because you're really excited about your game and maybe your sales don't match up. Make sure that you can actually contract if needs be. Um, Use your architecture simply. Um, don't try and reinvent the wheel every time. Um, people have done it before. Um, there's a few multiplayer games out there that have done this stuff. 
Um, protect your game, make sure you've got some good um, attitude and kind of some nice stuff, particularly in there. But also make sure you know what your, your game's life cycle is going to look like. Uh, so that's us. Um, bit of, just quickly, I'll do two minutes out there. Um, so we look at a lot of our hybrid scaling tech, we do a little sort of hybrid service. Um, I won't bore you with it, come talk to me if you're interested. Um, you can find out more from our website, we've got a new blog, uh, come check it out. Um, we've got a couple of other talks on YouTube, obviously you can't click on that link, so if you're interested, drop your email or a tweet, I'll send you a link. Um, any questions? We've got a couple of minutes. Do you want any coffee? <laughs> Is that a bit quick? <laughs>